So because when uh, considering a hypnotic for a patient to treat uh, to treat uh, insomnia, it's important to balance again efficacy and safety. So we looked uh, and and especially asking how the person's life is being impacted. So it's one thing to be able to say you've got 20 more minutes as measured on a on an objective sleep uh, study, a polysomnogram, but the patient needs to be able to tell that his or her sleep is improved. So we had a variety of different methods that we used in the Lemporexent Clinical Development Program to take a look at daytime function. So the paper that we're talking about uh, contains analyses from another one of our, our pivotal studies. This is a long-term safety, uh, efficacy and safety study. The, the long-term efficacy component was six months of double-blind placebo-controlled treatment. Lemborexin, five milligrams, 10 milligrams, and placebo in adults uh, 18 uh, and up with insomnia disorder. And the second half of the study looked at uh, the continuation of treatment for another six months. But we're, we're talking about the first six months here. So we used the Insomnia Severity Index, the ISI, which is a widely used research instrument that looks at the, at it, uh, by its name, you can tell, insomnia severity. And it also has some components, not just the symptoms of falling asleep and staying asleep, but also day, daytime function. So you can split the scale into two component parts and look at change from baseline in both of those components. We also included the fatigue severity scale, and uh, even though those subjects were not required to have uh, significant fatigue at, at baseline, we still wanted to see whether fatigue would improve because fatigue is a very common symptom of patients with insomnia. So mostly we were looking for concordance between what we knew about changes in the sleep parameters from the patient perspective, and that's, that's ascertained using sleep diaries. But we also wanted to see what happened on those scales. So what we were able to show was that there was a change from baseline in the insomnia severity uh, over time, and also in the uh, symptoms from the, the, the questions from the ISI that are for daytime functioning and uh, with uh, the fatigue severity scale. What was really interesting was that the insomnia scale uh, showed changes from baseline that were larger and statistically significantly different from placebo with, as assessed at the first month but not fatigue in the one in our one month study it took longer for the fatigue symptoms to uh, to show a significant difference from placebo so it might be that patients need many more weeks of good sleep to be able to, to see a, a change in that important parameter so we uh, so that those are basically the take homes uh, from from that paper too it just it emphasizes the importance of having a, a multi uh, a, a varied approach to the assessment of the impact of insomnia on the person that it's not just how fast they fell asleep or how much more sleep they had but how it translates into uh, into their daytime functioning was after all one of the criteria for insomnia disorders is that the symptoms have an impact on the person's life.